So what we're going to do here is to enter a truth environment, which is a special environment where the uh, root of the file system is moved or relinked, if you like. It's um, a fake root, if you like. And the new root will be where uh, MNT LFS is. So instead of that being a subdirectory, it will become root within the environment and we carry on building there. And obviously because that becomes the root, the use of $LFS is uh, redundant um, because the root is just the root now. We won't see the outside host file system at all uh, within the root environment. So let's move on. That explains everything here. So, oh yeah, some virtual kernel file systems need to be mounted. Uh, there's a connection to the running kernel. Um, but apart from that, there's not a lot to do in preparation. Um, so first thing we're going to do is go back to become the root. I'm going to check I've got LFS active because we still need it until we enter the root environment. And we're going to run these commands here to change the ownership of everything we've created to belong to root. And some other, another directory here for x86 64 bit. So now we're going to make some directories for the virtual file systems. So these are file systems that don't really exist. They're provided by the kernel. They look like file systems, uh, but all they're doing is exposing some parts of the kernel um, as a file system. And as you probably know, everything in Linux is a file effectively. So the first one is the dev directory. Then dev PTS. proc directory, sys directory, and the run directory. Then it says something about dev shm is a symbolic link to run shm in some host systems. Um, if the run tempfs was mounted above, so in this case only a directory needs to be created. In other host systems, dev shm is a mount point for a temp fs. In that case, the mount of dev above will only create a dev shm as a directory in the root environment. So in this case, we must explicitly mount a temp fs. So run this command in here, and you can see once again, there's nothing been done for Gen 2. Um, it's already configured as LFS would expect. Uh, so there's nothing uh, done, I don't think. Oh, sorry, it does one one or the other. This one doesn't output anything. So in all cases, you, you need to run this. So now we're going to enter the root environment. Um, I'm just going to modify this slightly to include the make flags option so that we can retain that functionality um, where we're specifying the number of jobs that can be run at once when make runs. So I'll just add add that in there and if I do echo make flags just to check exists it does that's good and we can carry on so as it says here it's important that all the commands throughout the remainder of this chapter and the following chapters are run from within the true environment um, and it says you can leave you know for example shut down at the end of the day but you'd need to go back and remount the disks and then remount the virtual kernel file systems and then enter root before we can carry on. So creating some directories for the new system. So if I just do ls-l you can see this is our new root. Um, there's no names here because that hasn't been set up yet. It will be set up and we'll get this I have no name disappearing as well. Uh, so we're just going to add some more directories into that. You can see they've now been created. And then there's some subdirectories here. I'm just going to run this all at once. If there's any errors, that they'll be printed on the screen. In fact, we've got outputs from each of these uh, 
commands that have been created. So I'll just check all of that. There's no errors. So that's fine. So I've just got to do some extra links here. Create some basic config files. So there's one for hosts. One for etc password. Uh, a minimal group file. And then a tester user is added for tests that are run in chapter 8. And then we're going to re-enter this shell. And it will get rid of this name. Uh, I have no name option. You can see the real name of the user has appeared here. And also if I do ls minus l, you can see the sort of friendly name of the owner and group has appeared against the files and directories there. So just a few other things to do. I'll copy these all in at once. So you can see the output there. That looks fine. There's no errors there. And we can start by building the remainder of the tools with get text. So we've got to go back to sources. Notice it's not MNT LFS sources anymore because we've changed the root position. It's now just sources. You can see all the files that we downloaded earlier. Get text. So configure it. Okay, build it. With make.
Okay, that's built. I'm not going to install to full full install. Just copy certain well, those three tools there. So that's it. Tidy that up and move on to Bison. Extract Bison. Change into it and configure it. Okay, build it. And install it. It's done. We want to pearl. So we'll extract Perl, change into the subdirectory, configure it, And let's build it now.
Okay, so that's done. I'll just install the package next. And we'll tidy up and move on to Python. So Python's one of several packages that actually begins with an uppercase letter. So in case you're trying to find it, it's not a lowercase p, it's an uppercase p. We'll now do a configuration on the package. There's a note there about you'll see fatal errors coming up in red. Uh, this is something that can be ignored at this stage. As long as the main make command doesn't fail, which will be obvious at the end, uh, everything will be all right. So let's build that and wait for it to finish. Okay, that's done. Let's install it. And we can now tidy up. As before, make sure you use the capital P. And we can move on to tax info. So I can figure the package. Build it. Uh, 
and install it. And let's take some info done. So now we move on to Util Linux. one directory to create and then we can run the configure and then we can build it Okay, and let's now install it. That's all done. And we'll move on now to cleaning up and saving temporary system. So what this is about is about um, just tidying up some necessary stuff that's not needed just to save a bit of space. I mean, obviously we've got 430 gigabytes here. Uh, it's not really necessary to clean up, but we can do this. So, just to get rid of some stuff that's not being used. So, we started off with 3.6 gig used. Um, this is important. These can be harmful to the build, these libtool archives. And the tools directory is not needed either so let's see how much space we've got now so that yeah that's removed about 1.3 gigabytes so that's quite a lot of space and most of that would have been the tools directory and it says about backing up the tools um, I used to do this and I don't bother anymore because I found I was never ever using uh, the tools directory I had used them once or twice initially when I was starting out um, with Linux from scratch but it was very rare even then so I don't really bother but the instructions are there if you feel you want to it may be a good idea if you think you might need to come back here if you mess something up in the next stage possibly a good idea for that but um, unless you um, you know very careful as well, very careless rather there's no really, real need for it um, yeah it says here running RMRF <laughs> make sure uh, you, you know where you are when you run that if you do need to restore stuff so what we'll do is just move on to the next stage building the LFS system <laughs> 